following Annapolis, the tough talking now begins. President Bush is hosting the start of formal Middle East peace negotiations. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert are both in the White House for their first direct peace talks in seven years. But as they meet in the West Wing of the White House, the violence goes on in the West Bank and in Gaza, where two Hamas fighters have been killed in an Israeli airstrike. More on that and reaction across the Middle East in just a moment. But first, Al Jazeera's senior Washington correspondent, Rob Reynolds, on Wednesday's talks. Annapolis plus one and already a sign of how tough the talks ahead will be. After a day of handshakes and grins, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert took a harder line. He ruled out conceding the right of return of Palestinian refugees to Israel, saying it would swamp the Jewish state with Arabs. No one seriously can think that there will be two states, one Palestinian and one in which the Palestinians will become a majority if all the Palestinians will be brought back into uh, the state of Israel. So the idea is to have two nation states separated, living alongside each other. The state of Israel will be Jewish, and of course, as it is, and the Palestinian state will be the natural place for all the refugees of the Palestinians to be resettled in. Refugees and their descendants displaced in the founding of Israel in 1948 are estimated to number over four million. The Palestinians have made their rights a central demand in final status talks with Israel. Those talks begin in two weeks, but first a White House send-off for Olmert and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Each will have meetings with President George Bush on Wednesday, and later a Rose Garden speech by Bush will cap the week's events. The awkward fact that Abbas has no control over the Hamas-ruled Gaza Strip wasn't mentioned in the formal declarations in Annapolis. But a senior Palestinian negotiator tells Al Jazeera, by the end of next uh, year, Palestinians will again be united under one leadership. How? Politically, we're not going to achieve it by yet another military counter-coup or a new civil war. It'll have to be done politically. Hamas, of course, wasn't present in Annapolis, and neither was Iran. In a round of U.S. morning news show interviews, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice touched on the unspoken second agenda at the Annapolis talks, firming up a U.S. coalition with Arab states against Iran. I think in the region you're seeing that the Arab states that have not been as active in the peace process in the past were there in the room, including Saudi Arabia. Uh, clearly there are some reasons for hope and for optimism. The Saudis wanted the U.S. to re-engage on the Palestinian issue as a way of defusing the rising power of Tehran and the popularity of its anti-Israel stance on the Arab street. Whether Annapolis will come to be regarded as a turning point or just another dead end will only become clear when Abbas and Olmert return to the region and get to work. Now it's up to them. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Washington. Earlier I spoke with Mark Regev, the spokesman of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I began by asking him whether the Israeli reaction to the Annapolis talks was positive. I mean, Annapolis is good. It's, it's, um, we're pleased in Israel. But the truth is it's good for peace, which means it's good for the Palestinians, it's good for the whole region, it's good for the globe. We want to see the peace process get out of the deep freeze and back on uh, the, the fast lane. But to see the peace process translate into something concrete that will give hope to people uh, living in Israel and Palestine, Israel will have to make real concessions. Israel will also have to take uh, concrete measures. Are you willing to do so? Most definitely, yes. We understand that if this is just words and there isn't a follow-up on the ground, that just will encourage more cynicism and more alienation from the process. It's very important that in parallel to the political discussions with the Palestinians, we work in a very positive way to try to create new realities on the ground. And here there are two things we can talk about specifically. The first thing, of course, is roadmap implementation, which both sides have commitments, and it's not words. It's very real things that have to happen on the ground. Palestinians have to do things, we have to do things. And but secondly, to date, to date, the Israelis have not fulfilled uh, their part uh, of, of the bargain as far as the roadmap is concerned. You haven't dismantled settlements, and you haven't put a freeze on settlements. We've taken down a few, but you're right. There are many outstanding obligations. And this is why Annapolis is very important, because until now, to be fair, both the Palestinians and the Israelis were not acting on their roadmap uh, obligations. I'm hopeful now, as we leave Annapolis, both sides will start a process of energetically implementing 
their obligations. I can tell you, Israel is ready to do so. But how genuine is this process as far as Israel is concerned? Because many, including Iran, see it as a plot to undermine it. Well, Iran is against the process. Let's be fair here. Iran is against peace. Iran is against Israel and Palestine living side by side. They're against compromise. They're against the negotiations. It shouldn't surprise anyone that Iran is against what's going on here. But does Israel's participation have more to do with undermining Iran and building an alliance against it than it, than it has to do with, uh, with you wanting peace? I think Iran represents, unfortunately today, the most negative elements in the region. It's not Iran as a country. In the past, Israel had very good relationships with Iran. It's the regime with a very fanatical, extreme, and I would argue hateful theology. And then they link up with the opponents of peace, whether it's Hezbollah in Lebanon or or Hamas in the Gaza Strip. But the Iranians could argue the same and say that the Israelis are on a uh, war footing against them, that you do not want peace with them. Ehud Ahmed said that he was willing to make peace with any Arab country, any Muslim country, but does that include you Iran? You could say that, but it wouldn't be true. And I'll say the following. Israel is ready for peace with Iran. We had a very good relationship with Iran. I, I recognize the right of the Iranian state to exist. Will the Iranians say the same about me? I'm afraid not. It's a bit disingenuous. Iran, unfortunately, has been promoting the most violent extremist agenda, opposition to the peace process. They've called those Palestinians who are negotiating a peace deal traitors. Now, it's very clear what their position is. They are, unfortunately, today the focal point of all negative forces in the region, those forces that are opposed to peace. Al Jazeera's Gaza correspondent has been following the talks and joins us now live from the White House. Noor uh, Aude joins us. Noor, uh, as Mahmoud Abbas gets ready to head back home, mm -hmm. what kind of reception do you think he's going to get? And how would Annapolis have affected his standing among Palestinians? Well, it's an uphill battle for uh, President Mahmoud Abbas as he starts uh, or is preparing to head back home to the occupied Palestinian territory, to the reality uh, that he was hoping he would ta be talking about in Annapolis and which wasn't mentioned uh, in Annapolis. He would have to convince his public that not uh, having the American president discuss the issue of settlements, of the continued Israeli occupation uh, of the Palestinian homeland, the uh, construction of the Israeli se separation wall, uh, occupied East Jerusalem, all those issues and of course the right of return weren't mentioned and discussed and he's going to have to convince his public that uh, that doesn't mean that in the coming days and weeks and months they won't be discussed and a, a solution acceptable to the Palestinians won't be reached. And will he be able then to convince uh, a skeptic Palestinian audience that uh, the, there is cause for some hope that uh, the display of optimism that we heard here in Apennelis is grounded in some sort of reali realism? I think, Rida, what's most important to keep in mind is that without concrete things, accomplishments on the ground, uh, President Abbas will not be able to convince the Palestinians that there's a chance even for reaching a settlement be before the end of 2008. If the uh, checkpoints and the Israeli roadblocks continue, and there are over 500 of them in the West Bank, and if the settlements continue to grow and, uh, and eat up more and more land of the West Bank, and of the wall continues to be constructed, all those things on the ground will serve to convince the Palestinians that peace is not possible and that, that Israel is not really serious about reaching peace and that the American administration, which is very key here, is not committed to pressuring Israel into taking the necessary st uh, steps to stop creating facts on the ground that would make achieving statehood for the Palestinians literally impossible. And how will Hamas, uh, do you think, react to Annapolis and what was or wasn't achieved here? Uh, will it attempt to complicate negotiations? Well, I think Hamas has already uh, been able to declare uh, Annapolis a failure from its perspective. It was, uh, the movement was very angry at the Arab participation in Annapolis, considering it a free gift for Israel, a beginning of normalization of relations uh, with Israel in exchange for not much, really. And at this point, every action that will be taken on the ground, every statement from the Israeli government, every statement from the American administration, and every raid uh, into a Palestinian 
downtown or airstrike against the Palestinian target will be used in the, in the context of the internal Palestinian division and the constant struggle between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, the two agendas at this point in the Palestinian political system, each trying to prove that its agenda, that its approach to politics and achieving statehood is the way to go.